Hello, Tom Lavecchia here with the second part of an important series, sit down with a former uh, MAID member of the Italian Mafia with John Panisi. I'm gonna introduce him in a second. If you missed the first one, I'll put a link below. We took from John's beginning growing up, Howard Beach, Ozone Park, Aryan Queens, and brought it all the way to his making ceremony. We don't wanna to have to have John repeat because John is on a limited time crunch. And number two, um, for obvious reasons, John is not going to show his face. So uh, we have a lot of questions for him. A lot of questions came in um, and we have a lot to do on the second part of the sit down with John Panisi. John Panisi, welcome back to the New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? All right, Tom, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Okay, so we talked about the ceremony and I asked, you know, what type of experience it was. Walk us through when you woke up the next day and the next few weeks, you know, what it felt like and, and, and how it affected your life being a MEAD member in the Italian Mafia in New York City. Um, I, I, I think that I waking up the next day, it was just like a, uh, another day. And you would yeah. think that I, looking back, I always thought that it would be a lot more, uh, meant a lot more than what it was to me at that point. And not that it, not that it was insignificant. It was very significant, but it, it, it when I started to really, when it sank in of, you know, the position I now held, I now held was, was by people. And it was the respect that people now gave you. And, you know, you start to notice these things. Like, for instance, if you were in a restaurant and at a table and you got up to use the restroom, you know, somebody at that table, when you're not in earshot, is going to say, oh, by the way, this is so-and-so, you know, he's this, that, and the other. And when you come back to that table, you mm -hmm. just notice that people are treating you a lot better. <laughs> They're being a lot more nicer to you. And, <laughs> you know, so, so. It was things like that, or, you know, when we were out drinking, you know, more drinks were coming my way <laughs> and people were buying you things. I don't want to use the word uh, ass kissing, you know, I don't want to insult anybody, but, you know, people just try to, you know, get closer to you and, and be more friendly to you and show you that much more respect. So in that sense, that's how I seen and felt that things were different. Now, the, the, the core of it, though, especially like in 2013, where we're at in, in this discussion, is like the mob got smart post John Gotti and got like real secretive, right? And we'll talk a little sure. bit about how the FBI didn't know who you were, which is amazing. Um, so it's supposed to be a secret society. So sure. it is, is, like, for example, is it the other people that are made members, hey, no, you're new because you got passed around? Or is it like kind of like, it gets around and then you go to your grocer. Hey, here's for you. Like the movie, like here's three groceries, here's a free dinner. No. Like um, outsiders versus insiders. No. Well, just um, let me just say there was one other thing. I'll, I'll answer that. I just want to say one thing. I was taught and then also learned, but was mainly taught that, and it goes this, I think this applies to anything in life. The more successful, and that goes to obviously legit life, but in that life, the more that you have power, which would be versus an associate versus um, a guy, a, you know, a friend. Yeah. And as we said, we know what a friend means. We discussed it in the last um, interview. Um, I felt that that's the more you should humble yourself. And that's the right way to carry yourself in that, in that life is that you really should humble yourself more because you also have, <laughs> the advantage over people and so that's i just wanted to say that um what you what you just uh, the question you just uh asked was um there was a time um and i'll just talk about inside i was a friend already all right so i was already inducted and i had a couple of meetings and it wasn't no official meeting. It was in Staten Island and I had sat down and, you know, not a sit down. I had sat down and had conversations with Dom Trisulo. And if anybody don't know who, who Dom is or was, he passed away, was a Capo regime in our 
forgot our family, right? And Dom did not know who I was. He talked to me. He knew, prob he probably in his mind thought I was uh, around John or somebody from that crew, but never knew that I was, I was a friend. And I had talked to him for a couple of hours one day and then maybe, you know, an hour or two the next day or whatever it was, we spoke a couple of times. Well, when I, I don't, I think it was John, I don't remember who it was who introduced me, formally introduced me. And I could see the look on his face. Uh. And it was one of surprise, but it was one of respect because he knew that I didn't, I never ever let on. Oh, wow. to him, who I was. And that's very, very important. And because, like I've said previously, there are guys who want to run around and get introduced to everybody and let everyone know, hey, this is who I am. And it is, it is not the way to do things. So that's part of being humble. As far as the people outside of that life, People talk, you know, and it's unfortunate and it, and it does more damage to you in that life yeah. if people know who you are. Yeah. As you say, secret society, it's best that they don't because years ago, you did not meet another member, especially from another family, unless there was a problem or you had to, or it was 100% necessary that you had to meet them or you had to sit down with them. You didn't, they kept that very secretive. And as you know, the West side, which um, you told your viewers that the West side is the Genovese family. They practice this present day. They don't, they try to keep that, you know, going to this day to try to keep this the way it's supposed to be. Unfortunately, women, no, who, if a guy got straightened out uh, last Friday on, on Tuesday, the women, women are talking to their girlfriends and, oh, yeah, you know, that's insanity. <laughs> totally insanity. And you want to know why? Yeah. It doesn't come from the women. Yeah. It comes from a guy, right? So yeah. that comes from another friend going and opening his mouth to a woman. I had, a, I had someone I was dating, and I'll tell you who it came from. I just did an article uh, in my blog on, on him, Joey Amato who's a cap regime with the, with the Colombo family told the, his girl told the girl I was dating. Oh, he said that she told me that Joey told her that you're new, like within the last five years, I, my mouth hung to the floor, like that kind of, I... uh, that kind of gossip between uh, people that are in that life and women are no good. And that's what causes, it's just what happens. That's why they say washwoman, right? Yeah, that gets around and eventually it's going to get to somebody. And I had heard that it got to somebody. And right now at the moment, I can't mention his name, but it got to somebody in Staten Island who's who is secretly cooperating with the government. And that's the first time the government has heard my name comes from this person. Where do you think that guy got it from a woman? And this is this is why it's so bad. So it goes to what you were saying that as far as keeping things the way it is meant to be and the way it was created, right? This was created to be a secret society, right? right. And it's the people who don't want to keep it secret and want people to know outside of that life who we are or who they are is, is what ruins it. And an example of that is Big John. Yes. Yes. And, and I could just, I could go on and give you 10 podcasts on him, but just to give you a quick example, there were times, number one is I, I tried over and over again to tell him not to have us meet at that cigar lounge. Why? You, you're giving the government and the FBI a treasure trove of information and photographs of us by us meeting there, right? Because those photographs, just like the wakes, and I was, I was an advocate against going to wakes, which the Gambinos, because now you have the other side, which is the Sicilian faction, practice that to this day. They stopped going to wakes. And the reason being is they're not only getting surveillance pictures, what else is the government getting? Structure, 
they're able to tell from the pitches and watching who's pulling up with who, who is showing respect to who, who's going over to who. They're showing structure. They're, they're able to form and get an idea of structure from pitches. <laughs> so we're doing damage to ourselves. Back to John. Yeah. There was a Halloween party and we're in the strip mall that the uh, cigar lounge is in is a restaurant called Zio Toto, right? And it's a Gambino related restaurant. But we stood in there the most because our place was right there. And he had told me, oh, you got to come back tomorrow night. They're having a, a Halloween party, a lot of broads. They used to kid around and call me bait. Not my nickname because I would, and, and I'm not again trying to pat myself on the back. Anybody that's listening that knew this knows this that when I would come, a lot of women would come over. <laughs> come over. He used to say, "Come on, bait, you gotta, we gotta get you over here." And <laughs> and um, so I was shocked because when I did, I did go, and he said, "You gotta come, you gotta come," and I went the next night. Where do you think, John? put his tables where I thought first of all we shouldn't have been there but what where where what, what would have been appropriate would have been in the back of the restaurant right we he put the tables right in front of the bar that was four deep at the bar and it had to be about 60 70 people in front of the bar to put us on on display as where the wise guys here and and a lot of guys like that kind of attention. And it does, yes, you have guys coming over. I, there were so many drinks being brought to us, we couldn't even keep up a drink with them, obviously. We had to turn drinks away. But the women, you know, because that, you know, in Staten Island, and no knock to the Staten Island women, I'm not trying to categorize all of them, but a lot of them are into that kind of lifestyle and into these type of guys and they love it. And, you know, so yes, we were like on display, but I felt so, I felt uncomfortable and I don't know about it. I can't speak for any, any of the other guys in the crew, but I just don't think that we should have been out there like that. And that's just an example of, you know, showing civilians as we called anybody outside of that life. Um, they use the term sucker. And they would call a working man a sucker. I never used that term because I never considered somebody who gets up and puts boots or pants on to go to work every morning a sucker. I just never used that term. But that is, that is a mob term of what they would call a guy that is not in that life that goes to work. They call him a sucker. Interesting. Now, what's – I've got to sidetrack for a second. It's more curiosity. You're at dinner with Big John. He's a captain. Correct. Let's just sake of argument. You're with five of the crew that, that are made men. You yep. have, say, three or four associates, right? And you all make you know, relatively, relatively around the same amount of money. You go to Zio Toto. Obviously, you're going to pay your bill because it's a other guy's place. You guys aren't, you know, you're not known to walk out on places, right? You even said that. If anything. No, no, no. no. If anything, you're more respectful, right? So the right. bill comes, 1500 two Gs. Who pays the bill? Okay. I'm going to tell you who should have paid the bill and, and you know the answer, right? So John should have paid the bill. And right. There's another whole story, but I don't want to jump ahead of where we were at. No, but, no, no. A, what's protocol and B, to share the story. This is your time, John. Well, no, well, well, look, as, as <laughs> everyone who kind of knows the history, yeah. we have changed administrations at some point. So I don't want to jump ahead of that. Okay, so yeah. when the new administration is in, John starts acting the way he should act, but that's then. But going back further to, to the night in question or any other night, John would do like everybody chipped in and paid the bill. Uh, or one of us would grab it, but it would never be him. And that was his place because, as you say, we basically all made the same money. And that's not true. Everybody was on different levels as far as money making and obviously John making the most. So he should have grabbed the, the checks. Not that he hasn't at times, but, you know, for the most part, he would, you know, they would go to somebody and say, you know, start collecting some money and let's pay this tab. Or, or we would say, hey, what's the, we would see a check come and we would walk over our way and start throwing money in. And it's not really what we should be doing. Somebody should pick it up. That's the way it would go. And we always said, if you're going to pay the tab, pay the, pay, 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 pay the tip too. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, oh, I'll grab the check. You guys get the tip. It, it just wasn't something that we did. Got it. Now, a really important part of, of this part too is I want to get a feel for, and, and, and I listened to, you know, John A. Light was years ago. He was making some real money. And I know John has a little controversy, but I, I believe he was somewhat relatively honest about what he made. Michael friend says, so though some people inflated it, huge numbers. Yes. Um, you know, interesting enough is Gene um, shared numbers and he was honest. He wasn't a big money earner. Um, yeah. And I'm not knocking him. because So I want to give a quick context and then we'll jump back to the question is, yeah. so me being an Italian American guy, you know, I went to school, have a master's degree, I make okay money. Um, and growing up, to me, the gangsters were, I think there was two kind. I think one, you had like, you know, people that stayed in Elizabeth or Newark, kind of maybe yeah. lower level and like maybe drug dealers or whatever. And like kind of dirt, kind of dirt guys, to be honest. Or you kind of had, oh, this uncle's a mafioso and he lived in like a retarded house, big money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. it was just like so wealthy that it was like, holy, like drug, drug money. And, yeah. and, and I think, you know, like any other business, I think there was a dichotomy, but, but what I'm saying is like, as a newer stuff comes about, and I'm, this is not a knock on anybody, but like Benji, and not Benji, uh, there's a guy named Kenji Gallo, and I was a little underpressed by him, to be honest with you. Uh, but but um, um, with, with, with uh, Gene and with, and with, what's his name, John Rubio, he was saying, the feds were giving me 15,000 a month cash. And I'm not- Really? I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna sound, yeah, I'm gonna sound, <laughs> Because I'm just going to be transparent. Like, I do okay, right? And for me, as an Italian-American growing up, and me being peripheral to that life, if I'm going to risk my life, if I'm going to risk my wife's life, my kid's life, like, it better be, like, real money because the ends have to justify the means. I'm not justifying that life. I'm not justifying the killing. I'm just saying, as an Italian-American guy from New Jersey, 15K enough is not enough for me to dodge vans outside. Now, John, I don't know what you made, I'm not knocking if you made more or less, that's why we're asking. But I'm just saying like, what I'm getting at is, like I'm trying to grasp what the money situation was like. So walk us through kind of before, right before the butt, what we were making, your revenue streams, if you will, and then what happened after and give us, if you could, as specific as you can in terms of dollars. It's, um, well, uh, so, Here's, here's the thing is that what you were talking about, about seeing people in big houses and there was a lot more money to be made years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, I personally um, know for a fact that uh, Michael Francesi was making big, big major money. There was no doubt about it. And coming from my neighborhood, John, Johnny A. Light, was was also making big money. I, you know, I don't know about I don't know the numbers, yeah. but these guys were making money because you gotta remember times were different back then. It was a bit different era to make that kind of money. Where our Bagata, we 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 were heavily into also the construction industry, the unions. That all changed as we talked on on a side note. That that all changed with the government put overseers in these unions. And it, there was not a lot of that kind of money going around. Um, the drug business was booming years ago. And a lot of guys made a lot of money. A lot of guys in our family made big money from years ago. Yeah. And they had, you know, millions and millions of dollars. And it came from, you know, the back in the, in the days of Harlem was, you know, uh, blowing up in the drug business yeah. and um, a lot of guys are ex junk pushers as they as they would call them right but for ourselves in my time you know what I what I've witnessed is a lot of wise guys chasing the same dollar and chasing each other and and also trying to cut each other's throat for that dollar and so you know one one thing is yes you're always going to have um, like I mentioned, gambling. And, and I told you, I was not a big money maker in the gambling business. I got by. I wasn't, it was more like pocket money and going out money, but it wasn't nothing significant. Um, yeah. I could have probably built it up, but I, I just, I don't like chasing people for money. And I, I just, it's just something that I didn't want to get involved in. So I kind of phased myself out. Um, the same, uh, on the same token with the, with, loan sharking it it is 
it can be very profitable, but there are a lot of headaches that come along with, with that business. Um, I did make money in that business. Um, and it was kind of like a salary every week. Yeah. Um, it just was a lot. It was more trouble than it was worth. You know, it was a lot of trouble, that business. Uh, I've never had trouble getting my money. I did, but it was just just chasing your money. Right. But one of the biggest uh, earns or scores, as we would say, is when you have these legitimate business guys and there's a business deal going wrong where one person beats another business out of money. And as a last resort, as I told you, they, <laughs> as a last resort, what do they do? They want to go and we would call it rent the wise guy. Now you want to rent the wise guy for the day and go to him and say, Hey, uh, X, Y, and Z owes me this kind of money. And can you go collect it for me? And now we would come in and, a lot of people put a percentage of what they want. I had my own set of rules when it came to this. If we are collecting your money and you had zero, we'll tell you what you're getting. We, we, we're going to take what we want and we're going to tell you what you're getting because what we give you beats zero. You yeah. know, and a lot of guys would try that. They knew from past experience, other people, oh, well, you know, I'll give you so much. You're not going to dictate to me what you're going to give me because I'm going to get your money. I put myself on the line because you never know what you're going to run into. And you have one shot in the way I did it. You have one shot at getting this done. I don't return a second time. Other guys and friends of ours have. I believe on that second trip, you're opening yourself up to all kinds of things that could happen. One being the whole place could be wired up. They could be filming you. He could be what I, I just never went back a second time. I don't care what kind of money was involved, but that kind of money was really our big earn back then because probably still to this day, because it was an easy one for us. It was, we would go in and there's one story where a guy that had a, uh, he was a, a, a supplier of the construction business so he was like one of the suppliers and he owed another um company um or somebody owed him rather sorry they owed him about a hundred and five thousand a hundred four thousand whatever it was and we were going to collect it and uh it was johnny sideburns it was spanky who's big john's brother and i took a guy with me that was with me and and myself and we now we went to um, a um, a concrete firm, like you know where they where they push in our concrete trucks, and so we get there early in the morning, like five something in the morning. It's pitch dark, and we go in. I think it was Spanky's car. It was an Audi. And now you have at that time in the morning, you have all the workers and they're preparing for the day. And here comes this car filled with guys at five something in the morning and everybody's looking and we don't know our way around this, yeah. this yard, this concrete uh, plant. And they're all looking and we, we wind up figuring out where the office is and all, and the office is dark and all of a sudden the, someone opens up the door. So I said, let me get out of the car. I went by myself and I know the uh, motion light comes on and I see it's a guy and we were there except for a guy named Mike. So I walked over and now the guy stopped because he sees me walking and he probably can't even see me too good because the, the darkness is behind me. Yeah. And I said, are you Mike? And he said, no, um, Mike's my father. So what am I going to tell this kid? I, so I said, all right, what time's your father get in? He says, he'll be in in about an hour. I said, tell him we'll be back. That's all I said. Never made a threat. Got back in the car. I told him, let's get the hell out of here. And we went to a diner and went to go eat. And uh, I said, you know, that's it. I'm not going back. <laughs> yeah. The guy was, you know, looked like a deer caught in headlights when he was looking at me. And by at least, I think it was by, so this is now like, you know, we're in the diner and maybe it's like six something in the morning. By 9.30 or 10 o'clock, I got a call to meet with somebody and I met and they said, you're never going to believe this. The guy called me up and, he, and the, the father, Mike, went and went over, paid the guy 105000 Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, so, so hold on. They said, what was your cut? 
Well, they kind of screwed me out of this. They kind of screwed me. I only got about two, three thousand dollars out of that. And it's because it wasn't my thing. I think Spanky and Johnny Sideburns took the bulk of the money and then had the balls, and I'll say the balls, to turn around and tell me that the guy that we because I had went to them and says, What's what's going on with the rest of this money? And he's collecting this money from this guy. And they said, Oh, Johnny Sideburns told me. You're not going to believe this. I said, what? He says, the guy we collected the money for, we found out that he wears, he's wearing a wire. So when he said it, I knew they were full of shit that they glommed the money. Because don't forget, I was very new at this time. Like, were you about, like Months new. Yes. And I was like months new into, into that life. And, and not into that life, but as a friend. And I knew right away that they bullshitted me to try to say, oh, we can't go get no more money from him because he, we found out he's wearing a wire. And there was no worry. Whatsoever. I said, so we're getting pinched. You know that, right? Yeah. And, they, well, you know, I, but they didn't seem too worried about it. So I knew. Well, I, have, I have two questions, John. And then, yes. and then we can throw it. But two questions. The first is, you know, the, I'm super fascinated by this part. You have a gross percentage of commission the mob took. Like, was it 30%, 20%, 50%? Like, what, what was it? On what? Like the 105, 105,000, what was a rough uh, commission gross taking? It, it, some people would take 10, 15 percent. I mean, I, I, I believed in taking half. If, if, <laughs> well, listen, you got to understand, you know, Tom, yeah, you know, yeah. we, we are exposing ourselves True. and putting ourselves out there. What, you know, there, there was uh, somebody with Johnny Gotti one time went in to shake a place down. The guy shot him and killed him. You know, years ago, uh, uh, um, what, what was Anthony Mosca? So, so you know, he was a friend. You know, you're you're exposing yourself to all kinds of uh, of of things that can go wrong. So, True. you know, like you just said earlier, right? I'm not going to put myself and my life out. Same thing. I'm I'm putting my I'm putting my freedom, my, my life on the line. So, so good point. So, so I get the percentages vary. It could be half, could be whatever it is. It can, but some guys try to keep it to ten percent. Yeah. Um, if you're collecting money for somebody, like in the Bagada, and you're going to get money that's going to somebody, you think it's seven percent. It's you. Or it comes off the top and goes to you for going and getting it. There's all different, you know, uh, of uh, percentages for different things. Got it. Okay. So, so I was taking some notes. So. You had some gambling, loan sharking, the occasional collections, that kind of stuff. What was what was your um, what was your main source of income back then? Well, it was the um, I would say the loan sharking. Okay, it was loan sharking, and um, you know, like I said, it was I could have. I'll just give you an example. Um, I used to stay in a restaurant out in Long Island. Right. And the guy had the restaurant for 30 something years. Yeah. And I started noticing that he kept coming to me with potential customers and I kept turning them down. And here's why I one day after about 10 different times, and I know he wasn't trying to set me up, but I, I said to him, let me ask you a question. How long have you had this place? He said, I thought oh, 30, he was had, he was from the other side. Yeah. He said about 30, I don't know, 35 years, whatever, whatever it was, it was over 30 years. I said, in that time, before I started coming here, how many people came in your place and asked you for money, to borrow money? Hmm. Nobody. Yeah. I said, and that's exactly why I'm not lending them money. I'm going to tell you why. I believe they're being sent here and sent to me. And now, had I been greeting at anybody else in our crew in our Bogato, anybody and anybody listening knows this to be a fact that can make money and get lend somebody money to put more money out there and put more money in their pocket would do it. And I didn't. So I could have made a lot more money if I went for these easy scores, but I just felt I was protecting myself. Got it. Now, um, now roughly, what were you making a week cash? You know, obviously you had probably some legal stuff going, that's your business, but the illegal stuff, mob related stuff, what kind of revenue were you making a week or month roughly? Well, you gotta remember it, it varied. So if you made, you know, it, in, in real, in, in reality, if I made 1500 to 2000 or whatever a week, it, and then it would vary also what if 
you're if you're pulling something in, if you're taking, if, if you're putting more out, it would fluctuate. So if someone, if you called in, you could call, you would call, you could also call money in if there's an issue. Yeah. Um, and then you would be losing that or, you know, um, it, it just varied. There was, a, there was a time when I had, someone had um, about $15,000 of my money and they went and reached out to a very wealthy Capuchin in our Bogota. And he was from, he's from the other side and done time on the other side. And he was very, very big in the junk business, very wealthy. And he had called to meet with me and I knew what it was about because I was putting pressure on this guy because this guy was playing games yeah. and I knew the connection there. But what I did, and here's something that no one does. Yeah. Whenever you're sitting down with somebody, and this goes for business too, and it's not, when I use this expression, it's not that these people were my enemies. Know thy enemy. Know who's sitting across from you. Yeah. And these people were not my enemies. These people were my, my, my brothers, right? And, and, but you need to do your homework. You need to do your homework. And a lot of guys walk into sit-downs unprepared and they lose i have never lost one just so you know for the record um and the reason being is that you have to know what's it because civilians or guys that are with you will lie to get to get you to help them and you're going in on the blind and if somebody's prepared on the other end and they know that lie you're 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 fucked because excuse my language but you're losing that so anyway I had done my homework and, and I come to find out, okay, he, he wants to meet with me. I know it's about this guy. I need to find out is the guy with him. And I find out that the guy is not with him. He's with the bananas. So around somebody with the bananas. So which in the street, they call them bananas. <laughs> I always call them bananas. I don't know why they call them bananas. But anyway, so when I go meet with this guy, who's a, a multimillionaire 10 times over, Right, and he is a skipper in our, in our family, and he's telling me about this guy and that he's you know puts his hands to his throat. Oh, he's getting you know he's up to here, he's choking. And I, I I said to him, well, let me ask you a question. Is he is he with you? Yeah. Oh no no no. He says no. You know, and he goes to the thing. I says, well well then, why are you here talking from? And he explained that he was away and he knows the father you know, from the other side and Venezuela and, and, and he went into this whole thing and that's all well and good. But I said to him, look, if you're coming here and you're helping him as a friend and meaning that he's a friend, you know, you're friendly with the guy, then why don't you give me my money yeah. and you give him the break? Correct. You know, you have the balls to tell me, well, right now is a bad time. And I don't even want to tell you the number <laughs> figure behind this guy that he could fill buildings up with money <laughs> and it's a bad time. And, and, and maybe after the holidays, I'm, I'm looking, I'm saying this guy probably got it in his back pocket. And, and that's what you're dealing with there. Yeah. You know? So that's also what you're dealing with in that, in that business and why numbers of what you're making can fluctuate because, you want to pull that in and, and that ends that pay that you're getting. So it, it goes up and down. And then there was guys, and this is very, very tricky and you got to be very careful. Yeah. There are guys who will come and want to borrow money and then make it known that, look, I'm only going to borrow it for six months. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to pay you the VIG up front. And that, this is where it becomes tricky. And as you know, the VIG is the, weekly payments that you're getting that has nothing to do with the principal, right? With the money you're lending. So it's tricky because you're going to give this guy, let's just say 10,000 and I'm going to give uh, John Doe 10,000 and John Doe is going to take part of my 10,000 and hand me back the VIG money up front. <laughs> yeah. So he's using my money to pay me. And I, then you're always taking the chance. Like, what is he going to do? Is he going to take off with this money? Is yeah. he setting me up? Uh, you know, am I getting this money back in six months? Am I going to have to chase him after six months? But it worked out, luckily for me, a couple of times that I did do that. The six months came up and the person came back and gave me the money. So I, I made quick 
whatever calculation it was on the 10,000, whether it be 300 or whatever it was, you, you got to be careful not to, not to choke a guy because people were charging five points and, you know, they're taking 500 on a guy a week, yeah. you know, and the biggest mistake that I learned and I tried to, there was a lot of times I tried to, like I just mentioned, I tried to give my advice on limiting our exposure to surveillance and, and give my advice on a lot. And a lot of times it was taken in the wrong way. Like, I think I know better than the next person. I don't, I just learned from history. You know, history is the biggest teacher in that life. Sure. Right. And as you mentioned yourself, Johnny Gotti, no knock towards him whatsoever. 100, 1000% a gangster when he was alive, when he woke up in the morning, when he went to bed and when he passed away, he went out a gangster. but he, totally ruined the life and everybody knows that so knowing that and knowing what the repercussions were behind carrying yourself that way you should know what not to do right yeah. and i would give advice as i did and i gave advice in this business to people and and here's what it was you have to profile you know tom i i can't you're not going to go lend uh, Vinny, the waiter, who with his tips is bringing home fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars a week, yeah. and he's going to borrow twenty thousand dollars from you, and you're going to charge him six, seven, eight hundred dollars a week. He's what are you leaving Vinny, the waiter, to pay his rent and live? Nothing. Sure. You're going to run into a problem. What would they do? I would run into, and I would say, don't lend it to him. I'm telling you, you're going to have a problem with him. I would run into somebody that would say, oh, I heard your friend just lent Vinny twenty thousand. Yep, there you go. I told him don't do it, and he did it. I would never do it. Of course, you want to make that money. You would, I would love to make, take Vinny to wait his money every week. How long is that going to last, and what's going to happen with Vinny to wait? Are we going to have to threaten him or hurt him at one point, or is he going to run away? You know, you've had a guy in your show. I was friends with the guy that he took about 300000 from. I was out there for that time, and it was, you know, they were fuming, fuming. Uh, well, know, the guy who it was fuming. Well, and you know, yeah. these are the things that happen that could happen. So a few things, uh, and I'm going to, I have my notes, but I'm going to go off course a little bit. And we're going to, we're going to probably about eight minutes left. Not to, we're not rushing you, but I'm saying is I want to, no, go right ahead. There's a super appetite for, for, for you. So I want to make sure for the audience, we really encapsulate like really great mm -hmm. stuff and then do it again. And for as long as we need to, cause I know you've been great. Um, What's well, so, your show, Tom? <laughs> yeah, and so you guys, yeah, right? So you guys are still around, right? And 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 this is 2013. This isn't like the, the 70s. No. Um, so real quick, to touch on the money, now I kind of get a feel for the money you made. And I'm not saying 15,000 wasn't a lot. It's a lot of money. But like for what he was doing, he was getting 15,000 to rat, right? And what happened was once that's over, you you can't go back to your life and you can't go back to that. That's what are you talking? Like, oh, you're talking about, about Rubio. Rubio. I thought that was just real weird. So, that's you're talking about, you know, um, a lot of money. I'm very surprised that you know the government will, um, you know, try to provide housing for you, or if you need to, you know, relocate from one location to the next, and all of that. But as far as you know, you're talking about handing him if it's accurate that's a significant amount of money i mean no one ever well, handed I, me that I, 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 but he was in a different ball game of what he was doing this guy was running around wearing a wire and all this all stuff. correct 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 i know but i i just what i'm getting at is is i just kind of look at it like i don't know, like i'm a business person where if i cooperate that fifteen thousand bunch is going to go away because i might get it for life and then i can't oh. for that. but so i got i gotta feel, i gotta feel for what you were making um what was your biggest single score if you could share, like, uh, uh, whether it be like a heist or uh, again, like dramatic, but like, was there any single event that you just, you just boom, nailed it or part of something big that you got a super nice tranche of cash? Um, you know, I, there is something, but I can't really discuss okay. it at this point. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny. You know, it's funny. Real quick, John. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so it's like, everybody wants real, right? And like, we're doing yeah. real, but like with yeah. real, will come some filtering like this. Yes, I, I mean, look, I, 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 I can't even say why, but I mean, it's, it's a little, I mean, obviously, you know, there's certain things that I can discuss and certain things I can't, unfortunately, I'll try to do yeah. my best, yeah. but there's certain things that I know that, um, yeah. 
I'll get myself into we want, it. We want, we, want, we want a third show, and I don't need like badges in my face too. So I'm listen, gonna... at some point in time, Tom, I will be able to yeah, speak yeah, yeah. about certain things, and you know. So, with that being said, all yeah. right, I get it. So, all right, the other thing is uh, okay. So I'm gonna frame then. So I want to get into a little bit of like what's true and what's not true about the mob. So, okay. so here's my understanding. And again, like I'm I'm on the outside, right? But I'm just yeah. giving you like what interests me and hopefully our, our, our listeners and viewers. I thought one of the benefits of being a mob was two things, and we can confirm. One is if you got pinched, like, like hey, here's your lawyer, and either paid it or you had, like, you know. Uh, wait a minute. Who's, wait, who's saying this? Here's so, your lawyer. So, so, so if you're a made guy, right? Yes. And you get arrested, part of the reason why you kick up to John or whoever the administration is, you're supposed to hold on money for two reasons. And hold, let me finish, and then you can answer. One okay. is to assist with lawyers. Or mm-hmm. make lawyers, and number two, if you go away and you don't rat, to get envelopes sent to your house, to your wife or your girlfriend. So can you okay. walk us through those two? All ways? right. So so there are regardless that do that. There are peop um there are crews or you know regardless that have a for a better word a war chest or whatever it may be to for legal representation or sending um helping families out where members are, are are away or incarcerated right that that is true but you know um and i have kicked in money for that purpose i have you know we have done things like that there was a time when uh the camuso needed to have another appeal we all chipped in um i think it was um uh, 1500 we all chipped in $1,500 and we got him his lawyer for, for the appeal. But look at who you're talking about. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm sure that if it was somebody else, they, they're not paying for your lawyer. Take it from me. Um, they're not giving you a lawyer. They may recommend one. Yeah. Um, but um, there was, um, we did have, we did have money going to people's commissary and, and uh, I don't know so much about their families, but it could have been, but you know, to help a guy out a little bit. So yes, there is that factor that, that, that is true. There is that part that is true, but not on the levels of other Bogatas. And I'm speaking for our own at the time, at the time they had a, uh, money for lawyers and we're getting them we're helping the guy out a lot which is the really the way it should be yeah. you know because there is a lot of money coming in and and you know it should be that way and you know like one of the one of the uh bogatas that have probably the most money would be the west side and you know when uh when chin was was alive and he was the when he was a boss of that family one of the reason one of the reasons why he was so respected and not only feared but respected was because he never took advantage of his men he would not take a lot of money he was making his own money and he would not look to glom money from the street you know they i'm, I'm sure he didn't deny any that was passed his way but he wasn't looking and and you know, that's the way it should be. That's why he was so old school compared to some of these, some of the present day things that go on. Interesting. So you, you touched on, and we talked about this um, offline. So we try not, I try to not ask too many questions offline to have John repeat, but John has some good insight. We talked a little bit about in New York City, in the mafia, there's not just the five families. You got like, Guys overseas at Calabria, Singh Dragata, right. the Sicilian Mafia. Um, and walk us through kind of like the working relationship rules. You had a good story about the restaurant. Give us a quick quip about how the look. And I know some families are more juicy. Like I know the Gambinos have this faction that's yes. just brilliant. Correct. The, the yes. Bananos, I don't know about now, but the Bananos were like all- in Canada. Or in yeah. ABS, right? yeah so, so, you know, we, we were able to deal with anyone we really wanted to basically um as as far as as far as Apagata really dealing with you know these other organizations that were as a whole a part of our life i don't really know of 
much dealings that we had. We don't forget we had like the uh, the guy I just mentioned that I talked to over the money. You know, we had people like him that had connections to the other side, and you know, and as I told you. Oh, I think I did, that if they are straightened out or they are inducted on the other side over here, we don't have to recognize that. Interesting. And, and yes. And they would have to, they would have to be um, inducted into one of the five Bagatas to be, to even deal with us. You know, that, that's just the way it was. And probably vice versa if we were over there. But we did have a lot of, we did respect them and, and you know, who they were and they knew who we were. And, but more, I, I do think that the, the, like, as you mentioned, the Bananos, I don't know about any more, but back uh, years ago had a, had a very, very big presence in Canada with, with different organizations and, and the, uh, obviously the Gambino series present day have this Sicilian, uh, you know, it's like they were bringing them in. <laughs> they were straight left and right. Yeah. They were straightening them out, bringing them over and straightening them out, and straightening them out here. And that's still going on to this day. So, yes. So you had a good Andragatha story at the restaurant. I know this is like not yes. like a murder story or money story. No, but it it's just, context it that, just uh, impressed me because of the way – how structured and how they carry themselves. Did I tell the story or you want me no, to tell No, you did. Okay. So I was in this restaurant that I always stood in that I just told you about. It was in, it was in, um, it was in Farmingdale, Long Island. And um, I'm in the restaurant and I'm at a table full of guys, uh, you know, eat, having dinner. And, and the owner calls me over and brings me over to another whole table full of guys and 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 it's crazy because i'm skipping the one part because i really don't want to go into it but i'm just i'm really running from the cops i i something just happened and i hit a guy in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a place in 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 massapequa and we ran to the restaurant and while we were in the restaurant and the guy's gonna bring me over somebody ran over and said hey there's two cop cars came out and i actually ran out into the back of the restaurant and dumped in, and jumped in into a garbage dumpster <laughs> to hide yeah because i thought they were coming to get me and um so they came and said hey no they came in for pizza <laughs> and because and half the restaurant was a pizzeria and they and they left so i got myself embarrassing out of this garbage dumpster and you know <laughs> clean thank god it really wasn't full so i cleaned myself off and came back into the restaurant and the owner said i want to bring you over here and bring you to these guys and told me who they were and they were at the uh, andragata right and and he told me right so what i was amazed by and i do not know how and it could have been like i like i've always said it that we kind of knew each other. I don't know. I can't explain it, but you just knew who we were. And we knew when we were talking or in the presence of somebody that was 100% in that life yeah. or was a friend. I, I, I can't explain how. Yeah. I don't know if everybody was able to have that kind of sixth sense, but we knew who we were. Yeah. And they knew who I was. I could tell right away. And there was a whole table full of them. And at the time, I didn't realize that they were sitting old to young. But, but and that comes later on. And we talked and we had a drink and, you know, and they were very, very respectful and the way they carried themselves. And it was very classy, old school, 100%, right? So I talked to them for a little while and we were going to say we were going to meet up another time for dinner. And yeah. they knew that. They knew I didn't want to be disrespectful to the table that I was with, and they understood, and I think they respected that. And I, I said, you know, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I, no, 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 absolutely, go. You know, it was a nice pleasure to meet you, and we really couldn't meet that way, but you know. And I said goodbye to everybody at the table, and I went and sat at my table, and um, they got up at one point to leave, and I'm looking over at them, and when they got up, they lined up like soldiers from young to the eldest which was their boss and came over and shook first came to me you know kissed me goodbye and you know that was our greeting and how we show, show each other respect and 
then they said goodbye to everybody at my table and all the way to the last person who was their boss and said goodbye to me and left. And I sat down and I said, wow, like we are <laughs> totally, <laughs> we are not like them. Like everybody's all over the place and yeah. who's saying goodbye to who and we're breaking up into groups and who's talking. And we just were not that um, structured. Interesting. As it, I was just very, very impressed with that. Wow. That, I, I, don't know, I don't know why, this, that story kind of kind of jumped. I mean, you told me a lot of stories, but that kind of story jumped. And, and you know, if anybody knows their history, they are extremely, extremely powerful yeah. on the other side. Yeah. And in Canada, and, and they're here. Yeah. But they're very, very low-key, yeah. and they are like it should be. You know, that's the way that life should be. You know, I could guarantee you this, Tom, yeah. that no woman is going to say, oh, so-and-so with them, just, <laughs> they just did him right. last week. Right. That's a fact. Right. And that's, what, that's where they are different. And that differentiates them in that life than the, the New York Cousin Ostra. Got it. And, and also, just for people who are not as well-read on them, they are tend to be related by blood marriage. So, in like the yeah. Spain Mafia, I think it was like a total of 50, maybe, Pentiti or, or informants, American Mafia, probably around 100, whatever the number is, yes. like five for the, for the Indaga type because they're related and you're less incentivized to, to rat on your brother. And yeah, they're very, very close. The husband, so. You could just uh, see it, you know, you could see it in them. And, and another thing is, you know, with us, you know, we would be at a table and, you know, someone would interject and say something. They only spoke, these guys, on you, and I said, as, as, I, as I mentioned, that towards the back end of the table were the younger guys. Yeah. And I don't know what their position was or whatnot, if they were friends with them or, or associates or, you know, I don't know what, who was who, but they only spoke if directed to. No one ever talked out of school, as they say. Interesting. You know? So we're, we're going to conclude soon, but before we do is, um, so listen, so, so one of the things that, uh, and, and, and to keep it simple, the mob's still active. You're a capable guy. You had a team. You had a crew. Um, and the Gambinos arguably, I'm not saying those cases are not strong, but the Gambinos are arguably behind the West side, probably num number two. I mean, that, that's a guess, but, but just going by what, what I read and what I see. Um, <sighs> Yes and no. I mean, we were right there. Um, we, uh, I think we were smaller in numbers as far as members wise, but not by much. And, you know, what, what really pushed, in my opinion, would push them ahead of us. And, you know, with all due respect, it was the, the Sicilian faction. Yeah. It just, they, they, they brought it, they took where John, Johnny Gotti left off yeah. and restructured that Bagata to the way it should be. And that kind of pushed them ahead of us, in my opinion. So yes, I would agree with that. So, so to conclude, and, and this is a little before your time, but it came within your family. One of the biggest differences between Sicilian Cosa Nostra and Dragata and the U.S. Mafia is I understand you guys had an unwritten rule not to touch family not to touch, you know, wives, not to, not to, like, so if somebody rats, like, they were hands off, right? And, well, and yeah, well, let's not forget, Al Bagata was, was, is known, I mean, um, they shot uh, 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 a federal witness's um, sister. And, well, you know, which I want to get to, John, really quick. So, so, so I think that the, the biggest different was, difference was, over there, it's like all bets are off. With all due respect, I don't know if we're having this podcast in Italy, whether they come to me to get to you or <laughs> why we're talking. They show and they have like tech and shit. Like it's a serious <laughs> over there, right? I'm not not yeah. here, but over there, it's like serious. You know, so I don't know. Well, they know. like like for instance, for here, we 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 really were not into using bombs. But once again, Apagata, we a lot of people don't notice because. We, we were behind the, the bombing of Frankie and Chico, right? So that came from us too. So here we are going against a lot of things that were put in place that we don't do. Correct. Well, that's what my, we're talking about. That's my point. So 
So as I understand, I could be wrong, yeah. but I think Picciotto and then you mentioned the other. So, so you guys are the only family that ever, I know it was before your time, but you're yes, the sir. family that actually went, that actually went after family of members. I, I know it was before your time, but can you yes. speak to that a little bit? I, I mean, look, it, I, it was before my time and it did bring, you know, we would talk about things and it did bring tremendous heat on the family. So you're only hurting the Bogata by doing something like that. And, 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 you know, but you know, if that's what, you know, if that's what they choose to do, then they'll, they'll do it. But you know, they would same thing. I was way before my time when they tried to get Johnny Gotti and, and it was by accident that they got Frankie DeChico. And, and once again, it's, it's, it's something that is really, um, you know, I think frowned upon by many, but who's going to say anything? Because don't forget what that Chin was involved in a lot of this. So really he was the force behind um, the commission back then that would have said that, no, this is a no-no. He happened to be in on that. He, what, and what I mean on that is, is the – the retaliation of to get and kill Johnny Gotti, not, not the shooting of, of Picciotta's uh, sister. Um, so um, I didn't know much because it, it, like we said, it was before my time, but yeah, I don't, I don't think that it was a, uh, a smart uh, decision for, for the Bogata. It only, it only brings, you know, forget it, it brings all kinds of tr trouble on you. Got it. Now, this may be along the same thread before we wrap up is, and, and listen, I'm a personal friend of Johnny, like Gene was on the yep. show, a whole bunch of people on the show. And these guys are like, screw this. Like, I live in New Jersey. I live in New York. I'm not hiding. I'm, like, I'm on social media. I'm out and about. Um, yep. and, and, and respectfully, I'm not knocking anybody. But like, they were also up to maybe, except for Gene, they were all like previous times who got older, who died, who maybe didn't like the guy they were added on. There's a whole bunch of dynamics there. But yes. how are these guys still walking around? Like, it seems like the Lucchese's at least, you had a crew, you had capable guys. I'm well, I could tell you something that, uh, that Johnny A. Lai don't know, that they were plotting on him. They were oh. definitely plotting, to, yes, Johnny A. Lai, and he's going to know that, I'm, that I know what I'm talking about, started uh, going around the Bogota Hotel in New Jersey, and we got wind of it. And the Jersey faction was looking to hurt him. So they definitely, and this, don't forget, you know, it would be more so the Gambinos that would want to hurt yeah. John. But, you know, so, you know, it never took place. But, um, you know, you have to be very careful and, you know, more power to them if they're, you know, out and about and whatnot. But, to, like, for instance, I had flown in and, you know, I have a younger daughter and I – try to see her and my other daughter and I had took her to a Halloween thing and ran into somebody that is newly inducted into Apagata and they put their head and their tail between their legs and left. So you got to remember something too. And John, uh, Johnny Eli knows this to be a fact, you know, people could talk, but it's a different story when they run into you face to face, yeah. you know, nine times out of 10, a guy is going to be worried about what you're going to do to him too. And, you know, they're not looking to come and approach you and, you know, unless they're crewed up, yeah. if they're crewed up, you know, now they have no choice, but, you know, as far as running into somebody, I just experienced that myself. So, and I've run into one time in a mall, I was in again and um, ran into two guys. They said, hello. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, I, you know, I made it brief, I, you know, hey, hey, oh my God, how you doing? Yep. And I kept it moving. But, you know, I'm smart enough to, to not hang out in the mall. You know, I left. Interesting. Um, not because I'm afraid, because I'm, I'm not stupid. You know, I'm not going to leave myself open to anything. So, you know, that, that's one of the things. But don't make no mistake about it that they, this was discussed. And, and, and Johnny A. Light himself I, there was a lot of discussions about about him, about 
there was one when he went into a restaurant called Cousins in New Jersey, and there was a little incident there, and guys were going to start laying on him over there. So they, you know, they will, if they feel, and they meaning anybody in that life, feel that you are flaunting or exposing yourself in their face, they have no choice but to act. Interesting. You know what I mean? And, and that's where you have to kind of be smart and not go. Listen, you, you, we were there. We were in that life, right? So we know where to go, where not to go. And, you, you, know, you know, who if you, if you removed yourself from that life, why do you want to be in, in any places or anywhere where there are people that are involved in that life? You're removed from it, you know? And that's the way you should conduct yourself. True, true. Well, John, listen, I mean, we, um, I, uh, God, we're, we're going to have a part three soon because, uh, I, you know, I, I, I think hair's back. I mean, if, if you're watching this, if you're watching all the way this far, you know, you're either, you're into this stuff, right? And, and John, I, a sincere thanks. I want to do a plug uh, for your blog, sitdownnews.com. We're going to put a link below. He put up some good stories. That Joey Amato story will save for, 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 for part three. I know you touched on it. Too. Yeah. Um, so John, anything else before we conclude about part two? No. And once again, I, I want to reiterate that there is to anybody that grew up in Brooklyn or lives in Brooklyn, I all said in jest, I don't, you know, have no, nothing bad to say about anybody from Brooklyn. Um, uh, <laughs> to, I got some shit about to, that. It's kind of funny. But other than anybody yeah. else, to okay. what I've said to you off uh, yeah. off the video um yeah. i've seen a comment about the copper regime um once again no knock to anybody i was just you know i'm kind of explaining things the way they are from my knowledge and being in that life uh whereas versus somebody who maybe was an associate doesn't really understand or know that because they've never been introduced to somebody and it's easy to hear something and and think that that's an old fashioned name or, 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 or title rather. So no knock to anybody. I do wish everybody the best of luck, even my enemies. <laughs> I do wish everybody the best of luck and I hope everybody had a uh, happy Thanksgiving and I hope everybody stays healthy, uh, especially what's going on out there and wear your mask. <laughs> love it and uh, love it, John. And uh, we really appreciate it. We'll put the link below. And uh, John, thank you for the part two uh, on being on the Nuclear Podcast. You're welcome, Tom.